So what do we do now? You have these basic principles. Um, you know about institutions. You know about supply and demand and indifference curves and budget lines and all of that fun stuff. Um, but as I've been reiterating throughout the semester, these economic models are overly simplified and wrong. Um, you've been doing things like fixing poverty by giving, um, in one of your problem sets, you had to, you were giving packets of clothes to people and they had to decide between taking clothes and all other goods. That is an incredibly simplified decision um, to either spend on clothes or anything else. And we were able to kind of predict what they would do. They would consume up to the level of free clothes because it existed. And then they would spend on other things. Um, and we could draw the indifference curves and budget lines. But that is incredibly simplified. Indifference curves are fake anyway. And so why even care about that? The numbers that we're getting are going to be wrong. Um, and that's just the nature of trying to measure things out in society. Um, when we were talking about willingness to pay, the demand curve comes from a general social desire to buy stuff, but those lines that you've been doing in different problem sets and exams are just equations. And those equations come from like regression models. And so there's um, um, confidence intervals and there's all sorts of uncertainty and there's error and they're never gonna be perfectly straight lines. And we know that and yet we still persist in using straight lines and seeing where they cross. Um, and that's just what happens in economics. We also can't measure anything perfectly. Beyond the willingness to pay, we can't measure preferences perfectly. We can't measure costs perfectly. There's still going to be error there. And in the end, even if we can measure everything as closely as possible, politics is going to mess everything up. Um, as we talked about the, in session two, um, where you have interest groups who distort the institutions that they, they have access to, to to reshape them in their favor. Um, we saw this when we talked about the institutional leg legacies of slavery and of white supremacy. Um, if you have white supremacists in power, they'll reshape the system to be more white supremacist and more in favor of them and deny access to others, um, which is bad. So what do we do? We give up. Um, this is, again, the, the institutional nihilism side. But my argument is don't give up. Don't just succumb to this. Don't succumb to public administration nihilism. You can still make substantial changes in the world given the limited knowledge that you have and the limited data that you have. You don't need perfect information to make substantial changes. Um, and what you really just need to do is muddle through. Um, and that's why I had you read this article here from Charles Lindblom, The Science of Muddling Through. And so what he argues here is that it is perfectly okay to just kind of guess your way through making policy as well as you can, because that's the only way you can actually make any decisions. Um, what he criticizes in, his art in the article that you read here is this idea called the rational comprehensive approach to management and policy. Um, and this is born out of this idea from like management science back when MBAs were first invented and MPAs were first invented, where um, scholars believed that there was a way to scientifically measure every managerial decision. And so you can make the best decision as a manager by um, if using unlimited time and unlimited intellectual capacity, unlimited resources to figure out perfect information about every single decision you can make. Um, and then you, you spend as much time as you need and then make that decision. Um, and so even back in like the 90s, 1950s and 60s, after this thing was invented, um, lots of public administration schools and MBA schools taught students to not do this because it's impossible. This is totally infeasible to just spend days and days trying to agonize over one decision and collect all the information possible. Um, but they still did it. And the fun thing about this is we're still teaching you how to do this. Um, in MPA programs around the world, you still learn about strategy and, and specific management tools you can do that rely on perfect information about stuff. Um, at BYU, there was a class on decision science. Lots of MPA programs have this where you can actually use statistical models to figure out the best decision. Um, and you can incorporate all sorts of stakeholder preferences into the model and it spits out a number that says you have a 62% chance of success and then you go with that or something. Um, and that sounds cool and it's like really cool skills that you can develop. Um, the GSU offers similar classes in their MPA programs and in their strategy. Um, the classes, even in the MBA world, you can take similar classes. Um, and it sounds really, really cool, but 
it's not exactly real life again. Um, it's overly simplified. And you can't spend hours and hours trying to agonize over one decision and incorporate every single stakeholder's uh, preferences and get a magic number that you know is certain. It doesn't work that way. Um, and so what Lindblom argues instead is we need to incorporate or we need to rely on this idea of successive limited comparisons or what he calls muddling through. And so the idea here is um, you seek out empirical evidence. You try to figure out what all your stakeholders want. You try to figure out the willingness to pay. You try to figure out what the marginal cost is. Um, and then start working with it and live with the real world constraints. And if you figure out that it's wrong, make adjustments and go back and fix it and then keep living with the real world constraints. And you go through that process over and over again and that's this muddling through approach. Um, in the article, he compares this, uh, these two approaches here. In the rational approach, um, in that world, having good policy means it's the most appropriate means to a specific end. It's been well researched and it's the best solution to everything. Um, in the muddling through world, good policy means a bunch of people agree that it's good enough to work and you do it and if it works, cool. Um, in the rational approach, you have no omitted variables. If you do, then that means you did something wrong. Um, and so that's an accident and it's bad and you should fix it and go back to your models. In the muddling through world, you purposely oversimplify things. Um, we've been doing that like again with the, the parcels of, uh, of clothes versus all other goods or like waffles and calzones. It's been perfect. Uh, it's been purposely reduced into something overly simplified, but we do that with the goal of making it so you can understand broader principles and you just kind of muddle through and we're purposely simplifying this stuff. Um, with the rational approach, any proposed change that you have is immediate and systemic and evidence-based and you know it's going to work because you've studied it out and you just have a perfect plan for it and you know it's gonna be perfect. In the muddling through world, um, policy changes are incremental instead and they're marginal and you get slow changes. Um, and this actually fits better with our, our, with the view that we've been teaching about institutional change. Um, if you're locked into some sort of institutional arrangement because of path dependency and history and other things like that, well, um, it's really hard to suddenly come in and have a sudden swooping change to the entire system all at once. That's going to be very, very hard to do. Um, but in the muddling through world, you can get to that point. Um, and so from the article, this is kind of the key takeaway from it, is that any policy you try to introduce is only going to achieve part of what you're trying to do. It will produce un unintended consequences. Um, but if you can do kind of a succession of incremental changes, um, then you're going to have better policy impact. You're going to have better um, uh, impact on society in general and, and improve the world. Um, and so main consequent or the main takeaways here is that change should be incremental. There is a place for sudden, very rapid social change. But in order to get to that point, you have to be at a place where the institutions are in a position to be replaced. If they're firmly entrenched, it's going to be very, very hard to just rip them out and replace them with something else. Um, so institutions, as we've learned throughout the semester, are very sticky and hard to change. And policies generally only get adopted um, if there's political will to do it. And there's generally only political will to do it if they're slower and incremental, which sounds kind of defeatist, but also it's kind of the way it works in the public policy world. So the general process for doing good public policy here is, is this um, following sequence here. You choose some sort of policy. Um, if it's based on cool evidence that you can find or you try to do some randomized controlled trial or you try to figure out the best equilibrium where supply and demand meet and it looks good, cool, do it. Choose it, on, choose it based on some criteria and then do it. If it works, improve it and make it better. Um, you probably didn't do it right the first time and so reform the, the policy and, and fix it and adjust it and see what happens. Um, if it doesn't work, go back and fix it and make incremental changes to it again and, and send it back out into the world. If the improvement worked, then keep doing it. If it didn't work, then go back and, and try to adjust something else. Um, and you basically just keep doing that over and over again. Um, and you should be able to come to some sort of good policy. Um, the same process applies not just to policy, but even the nonprofit sector. You think of some cool new program that you want to introduce. 
you could spend years and years studying it and gathering all sorts of randomized control trial evidence and doing tons of market research to figure out the exact marginal damage that you're trying to fix or the exact market failure you're trying to fix. Um, but that's going to be really costly and infeasible. So instead, you just kind of say, I have this idea. Let's launch it and see what happens. And then if it doesn't work, fix something and tinker with it and just keep tinkering with it until it turns into kind of a flourishing, blossoming program or dies to the side. Um, and so that's kind of my argument for um, public administration here is um, do this incremental system based on um, the principles that you've learned in this class and you can have a positive impact on the world and you can um, change institutions and reform institutions, which is the only way any of this stuff is going to have lasting impact on society. So good luck with that and thanks for a fantastic semester.